Welcome back to Sumster Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're gonna play Silk Road's Caravan King. So grab your camel and get ready, because we're gonna follow in footsteps of Marco Polo and travel to Katai in a search for adventures and riches. So let's go and start our caravan. This is a very much like a casual merchant game with a very text-focused story. The bearer of this note is all 12 silk or the equivalent value at the time of delivery, which is not to exceed the month of August in the year of our Lord 1275. In exchange, the sum of 1032 ducats shall be made available upon signature to be used in the further exploration of the mysteries of the Far East and to procure such items. The sign is unable to read, then the text will be read to him at the expense of the merchant's skill. Don't worry, we can read. Now what's interesting that the number of silk and the reward, also the time of delivery, is randomized. With your mark made on the contract, your debtor hands you more money than you have ever seen. Quickly head off for supplies, purchasing travel equipment and dried foods. Supplies in hand, you heed to the docks in search of fortune, intent on joining a merchant ship headed for the east. Where were you headed again? Now we can go either to Constantinople and the steppes, or onto the Acre and the Far East. So this one is more like you're gonna have a lot of time between different city so you're gonna have a lot more events but less of the merchant phase of the game and this one is more like focusing on a sort of like buying and selling and with a little bit less events in between we're gonna go go to do the onto the arc and the far east both the holy land and the gateway to the far east the land is densely populated with short journeys between the cities but that does not make them any safer the local goods are ivory let us begin now, this on the left is supplies. We're gonna eat a little bit of supply over time. How much we eat depends on our endurance. This is money, that's rather obvious. The camel is going to allow us to carry more stuff in your inventory. This is your inventory, how much we have, how much we can carry and so on. And this, by the way, is our date and season tracker. What's important that you shouldn't travel in winter because it's dangerous. This represents your health. You can see here kind of like a word description, not the exact number, but in the background of the game, it's counted in the, in like actual numbers so even if, if you get something gives you plus health and this still so strong the effect is still there so it's like it doesn't jump between levels the actual number matter that's what i'm trying to say and then this is morale which affects our movement speed and also low morale can have negative consequences this is general we'll talk more about that later out at sea, you can see the world stretch before you. Hear the sailors singing and the crashing of waters against the ship. Smell the sea air. You can really see the sea, though. An endless blue rocking back and forth and back and forth. Come to think of it, you're actually feeling quite unwell. <laughs> okay, I guess we get seasick, which kind of sucks for us because we're the captain of this thing. You can go to sleep, you can spend some time in the galley, you can go to get some air, we can check out our provision. Let's go to sleep. Try to screw your eyes shut, but you can still feel it. The sailors don't seem to mind your retching, just as long as you remember to do it overboard. <laughs> oh well, we get lower morale, but we're still joyous, so that's fine. Here we can see our journal. So we've got relationships with different religions. So we got, at the moment, the Christians like us the most, and the Tangri, Hindu, and Kun machines like it and, yes, and everybody else likes us the least but that's all right over time we can increase it here we've got our skills intelligence which affects our camel limit endurance which increases the time our supplies is last agility increases my walking speed and strength increases the weight we can carry here's our inventory the moment we only have supplies but over time we're gonna buy other things you can also have equipment which allow you to do additional things for example if you can get a bow you can then hunt for animals and things like that and here our contract is just telling us that within two years we gotta bring the silk because that's our goal so we'll see if we can do that a ship flying the hated Genesee flag has been spotted on the horizon. Though our republics are in time of peace, there is no doubt that the vile Genonians would resort to piracy. You must prepare. Let's get ready for battle. Equip yourself with a disused bow and a pan of armor and prepare yourself for the battle ahead. You steal your nerves and ignore the laughter of the shipmen. Some time passes with you frozen in battle position when the captain announced the ship has passed. I totally scared them off, it was totally me. Oh, but we gain equipment, we gain a bow, which is really, really cool, I like that. Did you really think they would attack us? And even if you did, what did you think your bow is going to do? They're way too far, we needed cannons. I mean, I guess you have a good point. This is my first time on a ship, okay? I'm getting seasick, I don't know how to handle this. Okay. 
fine, just be quiet and don't interrupt us. And also stop calling yourself captain. You're just a traveler here. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make the game more exciting. What game? During one of the few activities available while on the ship, staring at water, you spot some dolphins swimming just alongside the ship, shout in jubilation, calling for this, Watch, watch, there's some dolphins here! To watch them spring in and out of the water when seasoned sailor spots them. Storms are coming, Zolly says. I thought you would like the dolphins, they're very pretty. We see them every other week, they're not exciting anymore. <laughs> we can either pray or get drunk, let's pray. Head directly for your bunk and begin to pray. Inform God that you are no Jonah. <laughs> I'm sure God already knows that, but okay. He didn't even like fish and it would make for a poor parable. The sea is calm all night and by late out everyone seems to have forgotten all about the incident. I saved us. You seem to have a very high confidence. Like really? <laughs> Stalling my prayer. It's a prayer that's here. So in the if you pick the other one, which I did in my test game, we're gonna go upwards this way towards Athens. But now we're gonna move over the Mediterraneans to the east. Now the galleys may be Venetian, the crew is smattering of other cultures. It may be of some use for your journey to acclimate yourself to these people and their ways. So we can talk to the Saracen captive, the Tartar merchant, or stick with the Latin. Let's talk to the merchant. Let's talk to the merchant. Tartar is too distracted counting his coins to pay much attention to three, four, five, six. You sit with him nonetheless and try to stake up, strike up a conversation about his homeland. I mean, so where are you from? He looks into the distance as if able to see the great grass sea that he describes, the flat plains and the plentiful game. 55, 56, 57. <laughs> now I can count too. <laughs> but they like us a bit more, the... Tangri. Yeah, it worked. It worked out well for us. I mean, it's fine. So, you know, we, we gotta make friends, you know? The, the crew members on the ship, they don't like us that much. I never said I don't like you. But, but you better talk to me. Well, uh, I have a job to do. I don't have time to chit chat. Yes, you make a good point. I mean, one of the few activities available. Okay, so there's another storm current. Let's pray again. I mean, we saved us last time. Head yeah, directly. Okay, so we pray again. As you finish up here, the ships begin to rock violently. After hours of fighting against the sea, you awake to find the ship's rigging has been damaged, ghosting the journey some time. Well, it's better than being fish food. I mean, also it's better than getting drunk. You don't want to get drunk. You'd rather pray. Out at the sea, you can see the world stretched before you, hearing the sailors singing and crashing of water. Again, okay, so sometimes you get like the same events multiple times. Let's this time, let's go get some air. The warm, salty air makes you feel drowsy, but your stomach is more awake than ever, and you find yourself having to rush through the Telrave. Yeah, we're, we really gotta go to mainland. Alright, so we finally reach our very first city, so let's go to the market and buy stuff. Ooh, so actually I check no the prices a little bit from my desk game. So the ivory is quite cheap. The spices are super expensive. The supplies also you can get them for like cost of one. So we're gonna buy like just like one. Uh, we should also buy a camel so we can carry more stuff. And we'll buy some ivory. Let's buy like ten ivory. I think the f we'll, we'll buy one silk and we'll try to get five first. I know the spices are expensive, so we're not gonna bother with those. Okay, we can only get four first because they've got no more. Maybe let's let's get a bit more ever. We'll get like fifteen, and we could also go to work or we can just keep moving. We can become a labor laborer for one hundred and thirty ducats. So what kind of job you can get is dependent on your relationships and also on your skills. So if you get better in some skills, you might be able to do a better job. But I think I'll do it. Let's work for 130 ducats. And now let's travel to Baghdad, which we need seven pounds of supplies. Well, we've got that. We've got that. That's no stress about it. We're moving a bit slower in the mainland. There's unfortunately no way to speed up the game. So yeah, I kind of wish there was like a time timer would be nice, but it's okay. You over your companions discussing their homelands. Most know something of each other as being traitors and all, but none have ever been as far as you. Most have never even made it to Constantinople. Um, let's uh, embellish a little bit. I mean, if you want to tell a good story, you gotta make it exciting, you know? And not just with your voice acting. <laughs> also, it helps if you don't talk at the speed of a tornado, but you know, we're working on things, okay? You begin to tell what you can remember of your homeland, the floating city, the canals and the weld, and the gold mine from which everyone has equal access. Really? Gold mine with equal access? 
Come on. <laughs> Maybe not the part to embellish, man. And Quenian suddenly seem electrified by your story as if they want to talk. As if they want to talk there already? What? They want to go there already, maybe. Strange. It's a great land. Alright, so the Islam people like us. That's nice. So Muslims are friendly. That's good for us. Because the, the more they like us, the better job they'll give us. Maybe even better prices. I'm not sure if the relations affect the price, but I think so. That would be pretty good. Even all the way out here, God has sent an omen. A burning star streaks across the night sky with fairy tale as long as the horizon. Celestial bodies are the work of heaven. As far as you can tell, you're the only Christian around for many miles. Is it a sign just for you? I mean, I'm pretty sure all the Muslims think is a sign of Allah, but I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't take ownership over that. Also, the Chinese will think it's like an astrology thing. I mean, I think everybody thinks it's for them. Now would be a good time to panic, that's fantastic. Oh, it's a bad omen, I thought it was a good... I mean, Burning Star could be a good omen, who knows? I mean, I guess it's not, but okay. We could panic, we could tread carefully, or... Let's, let's just say dark magic is afoot. That seems like a wonderful fun thing to do, let's do that. One of these heathens has used some dark magic to curse your grip, well, not you. You force a blessing on everyone in your group and anyone who walks past. If it doesn't end the magic, at least God will know what a true Christian we are. Ungrateful. <laughs> that didn't work. Yeah, I mean, I thought it would just say the dark magic happened, not that we're gonna force our blessings on them, but you know, whatever. Other option was to panic, or I forget what the last option was. Guess it wasn't important. Over the past few days, the Saracen companion has been drawing ever, ever weaker, setting up a camp late into the night and breaking camp early just to keep with the, up with your group. This morning he has been found dead, seemingly of natural causes. Already people are volunteering to oversee his affairs. I shall oversee his wealth. <laughs> oh my god. That's, that's, I kind of want to do that. But I mean, we, we, we are. Are we a nice guy? I guess we are nice. Let's oversee his fair. We're going to be a nice guy. We're going to be a nice guy. You figured that Christian and Saracen rights can be so far different from each other. Companions are impressed that he took on a responsibility with such little potential for personal profit. His body is interred by the evening. I mostly, I mean, I mostly just dug a hole, but I'm glad you guys are happy. Also, I know you guys were upset with me about the blessing with the star that was falling up on us, so I just feel like I wanna, you know, I wanna show my respects. Last night we were caught in the age-old trap of only of one glass, and you're feeling it today. Between the haze of the early morning and the fog resting in your mind, you have a long walk ahead of you. Time for the family secret cure for hangover. Yes, let's do that. Through the pounding inside your head, you struggle to remember the old family recipe. Also because there isn't one, because we're good Christians and we don't drink. But like, I want it to look good. Something about raw egg and jellied eel some- What? No! No! You piece together a portion so well you never want to drink again. No, that was so gross, man. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sure Aunt told that to us when we were young, like that's the recipe so that we would never drink. And we didn't until here. And now, now we're never gonna drink again. That was horrible. First, you accidentally put your best walking stick on the fire. Then the strap broke off your satchel and now you've stopped your toe on a rock for the third time this week. So it's clearly God punishing you for keeping company with such little people. I think it was more being punished for the drinking? I mean... Oh, we have to blame someone? Oh, that's not great. They're gonna hate us now. Um... I could blame the Sarisan, but I'm kind of trying to work with Islam, so maybe not. Um... Blame the... Mm, the Indians. Because, like... Who hates us the least? Oh, the Tangri hates us the least, so maybe we'll blame them. It won't be so bad. So let's do that. Uh, let's try that. You turn on your backs and let the darn idolater know exactly what you think of him, sparing him no amount of condemnation threats of hellfire. When he overcomes his shock, he lets you have it right back. You yell yourselves into exhaustion. You shove him? Come on. I mean, I guess we had it coming. He shouldn't have yelled at him. It wasn't his fault, okay? 
<laughs> How ridiculous it is that you stab yourself in your toe and you yell at someone. Come on. The first in their inventory looking more appealing with each passing cold night on the road. They're stocked to be bought and sold, but they will do you a little good if you freeze to death before they can ever see the market after all. You can make a cloak with on. Yeah, let's make uh, let's make a cloak of one. We have enough fears, it's fine. With the simple use of a belt, you manage to fashion a cloak out of a long broom for hide. The skin is soft to the touch and the merchant that sold it to you claimed it was bare skin so it must be good for keeping out the cold. Last night he started sweating when he sat too close to the fire. This thing is great. I love this thing, it's so cool. Would you like me to make you a fur too? I am never gonna speak to you again after you insulted me. I mean I was trying to apologize with the cloak. Oh, okay then, do it right now. Hundreds of pilgrims flock to the Holy Land each year, though the lands that the Lord himself walked are beyond the scope of your journey. Fortunately, a wandering monk is selling holy artifacts at incredible prices just to keep them out of the hands of the Resurrections. Well, you get a splinter from the True Cross, oil from the Holy Sepulchre, or rag used to wash the Lord's feet. Mm, let's get a splinter from the True Cross. Probably fake, but we'll take it anyway. You're stunned to be in the presence of the true cross. Would the Son of the Lord truly want those who follow in his works to celebrate that which brought to about his end, but brought about the saving of all mankind? Resolve to wear it around your neck. I am truly blessed. 75, okay. I was kind of hoping we'd be... In my test game, I got to 100 at the questions, but in this game, like, we, we are having trouble making people happy. That's alright, we can work on it. We're almost in Baghdad, so we should be able to trade some. The moment a nice and plump peasant popped into view had begun stalking it. Waiting for the perfect moment and lining up your shot. Just as you lose the air it gets caught in the frayed wood of your bow and thuds to the ground, scaring the peasants away. Your bow needs some maintenance. Nothing all elbow grease can fix. Sure, let's fix this. All the bow needs a little bit of love. You lay it down on a roll of carpet and set to work with some tools you scavenge from other traders. You polish the wood, send down enemies' hape and lumps, and mas massage the string. Pretty soon your bow is back up to fighting shape. Well, I was really worried about this. I really like that we got. Do we have any other equipment? I don't think so. Just the bow, just the bow. Okay. Okay, we're gonna have to sell all our stuff soon. Hopefully, I'll make some money. We'll see. Come on, Baghdad. Let's get inside. Alright, let's go sell. We have to pay 16 ducats to be able to sell our stuff. See, the ivory is very good, so we're gonna sell all of it. And the first, I think we bought it for slightly less than this, so let's sell them all. We'll buy some spices. Let's buy them too. And we'll buy some silk, because it's cheaper than elsewhere. We also, do we need to, where can we go? We don't need seven supplies, so we're gonna go without buying more because I think I, I mean, four is really expensive for it. I don't wanna do that. It could also work, but only for 60 ducats by a gross. So that's because our relation with Islam are terrible. So let's just keep traveling. We, we gotta work on that. We gotta do better. Because, yeah. While in the village making a small trade for some supplies, you have made an attractive deal with the Saracen. Before you could complete it, though, a local Christian approaches you, offering you a deal for the same supplies at a worth price price. No! I just said I want to make these guys happy with me. Go with the Saracen. You make the more profitable deal. This is a matter of business, not fate after all. Also, we need to make friends. The Christian seems to think otherwise, taking a rather personal stance on the whole issue and blaming the taxes levied by the Saracen on Christians for losing out the business. How dare you! How dare you? This was a good deal. This was a Christian deal I made for you. I cannot give you the prices as they can. How dare you not take the price? I just I just wanted money, okay? It's something personal, you know? I am never gonna speak to you again. I mean, that's your choice, but like, you gotta do what I gotta do. Not listening. Fine. Let me just walk out. Also, if you're wondering what my name is, since I'm clearly playing as a man, I'm gonna name him after one of my patrons, so this is Jujus. <laughs> Jujus the Merchant. A local guide has offered to show your caravan group a fast route away from the mainland, for a price, of course. Some of our troop have opted to pony up the fee while some don't trust him, so it appears that your decision is going to be the deciding factor. I'm slightly worried that I'm gonna follow him and they're gonna rob me, but I'm also gonna do it. 
If the boy do can. Reach into her pocket and grab a few coins and the other travelers follow suit. The boy snatches the money from her hand and begins to run off. You begin to think it had been had before he turns around indicating for you to follow. Whoa, he saved her five days of travel. Nice. Thank you, man. That's good because we're going to use up less of our supplies. Just gonna, hopefully the supplies in Terran is going to be cheaper. They are near water, so hopefully they can like, get some fish there, things like that. You often find yourself camped out by some stream or lake, and you've made a note to yourself to try and pick up fishing rod if possible. An opportunity has presented itself and you see a peasant boy set by a pond. Yes, let me give you ten ducats for the rod. I want, I want it. You make your original offer of a couple of the cats, thinking you might get away with it, but the boy is too sharp for you. After an hour of flat negotiations, you offer the boy your purse, fully expecting him to turn it down. Instead, he snatches the purse up, claiming to have a new rod at home anyway. He's quite the traitor. I mean, if I ever see you again, you could join me and become a traitor. Really? I never thought he'd say that. But I have to go home and help my parents, parents on the farm. Oh well, see you next time, I guess. Over here, Curious started to collect quite a collection of bags. None of them are any more special than a rough sack which used to carry a grain and you can't seem to let go. After all, how will you find your apples if you don't have an apple bag? <laughs> I don't know. These are all essential. We could turn it into one big one, or we could sort them through. Let's sort through them. Instead of doing something rash like making a mega bag, I did that in my test game. It takes some time over the next few evenings to really sort through your luggage and come up with an interesting sorting system based on value, perishability, and how often you like to look at it. I'm a master planner. Oh, but it makes us unhappy. Oh, but we gain, we gain this thing, we gain uh, agility, which increases my walking speed, so that's really, really good. That's gonna help us out. Hopefully. We are supposed to eat up seven supplies, so we should have six left, which is what we're gonna have anyway. So even though we went fast, it didn't really help us with the supplies. One of your fellow merchants has managed to overburden himself in his camel train after a particularly successful negotiation. He's now looking to lighten the load, offering you the loot which you have eyed enviously more than once. Yeah, let's get it. For five ducats I'll grab it. How could you refuse such an offer? He the loot from his camel which looks not the least bit related to have lost such a petty amount of weight. Ooh, so we're gonna... we can play, we can sing, we're gonna be a little bit happy, it's gonna be all good. I mean, assuming we can play, because if you can play, it's gonna make everybody super, super unhappy. It would seem the god's wrath stretches all the way into the lands of the idolaters as the earth shakes with torrendous roar beneath your feet. Calm the camels, play yourself before the lord, try to hold on, calm the camels. I don't want the camels to run away, that's gonna be bad for me. You hasten to the camels in the caravan, not a moment too soon, even bound together they look ready to bolt. You grip onto their leads for dear life, being thrown about by the power of the earth and the camels. Soon the earth seizes its movement and you check your body for bruises. Well, that hurt, but again, it increases our speed and we're still healthy, so it's all good. Hopefully we can sell our silk and Tehran for good prices. We bought it for 96, I'm really hoping for like maybe... 110, something like that. You had thought your fishing rod just needed a new length of string, but upon closer inspection, not only are your strings frayed, but the wood itself is beginning to weaken in very way. Frankly, our fishing rod is in a bit of a state. Let's try. We'll wait till we do cast to get maintained this often. Local villagers willing to give sending down your rod to try. You wait outside the carpenter's workshop for time while he works. When the rod is returned, it feels noticeable smoother, and the cracking sound when you apply pressure is gone. It's practically new. I mean, it's a great, great fishing rod. Alright, what can we sell the stuff for? No, the steak is even cheaper. The spices are a pretty good price, though. And supplies. Let's buy a lot of supplies. We need, like, 30. We're gonna get up to 30. Maybe even 40, because it's super cheap. And we'll buy some spices. All of them, actually. Still have some space. We could work... As a grocer, that, that's not great. Well, I think actually this is a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write down in the comments. And you can click on the right to watch some other traveling merchant games. Like Vagras the Riven Rounds. Or... Death to the end. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.